that night, after everyone was, had gone to bed, I went to sleep and had uh, a, a profoundly frightening nightmare. Uh, we've all had nightmares. Uh, I don't have them regularly. Uh, this was the scariest dream. And in this dream, that the, 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 the curiosity of the dream was the dream was set not only in the cabin, but in the bedroom I was in. It was not a lucid dream. I was sleep in the, in the dream, I was in my bed, and I heard scratching sounds coming down the hallway toward my room. And I was terrified already. I, w I was absolutely terrified, but um, it, 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 my nature being what it is, I think, I think had I been a different person, I may have uh, uh, jumped awake at that moment. But I said, no, I want to know what's coming. I, I really did. Uh, and so... Um, I kept myself uh, from waking up. I, I was in the in the in the midst of a nightmare, and the scraping sounds came closer and closer to to my room. And around the corner came a woman, in my dream, with long black hair. She was backlit so that I couldn't see her features, but she was wearing a very odd garment, a black garment, that went down to her ankles. It was trimmed with red. There was red along the bottom, and there were stripes of red uh, down the side. Uh, some decorative thing, I thought. Uh, but it was terrifying. And the closer she got, the, the scarier I felt. You know, the nightmare uh, reached its uh, apex when she was standing at the foot of my bed, staring at me. And that's when I gave in, and I actually w woke up with, I, w I bolted a, uh, up in bed, you know. Uh, the, the dream was so frightening it woke me up. Uh, and it was so noteworthy, it took me all morning to get over it. We met with the group back at the lodge, all the family, and we're talking and laughing and having brec breakfast. And there was uh, a member of my uh, family, Mary Ellen, who uh, is the family historian. And there's also something of a West Virginia historian. This t takes, takes place in North Bend State Park near Cairo, West Virginia, which is also very near Parkersburg. And uh, during the breakfast that last morning, I went to Mary Ellen's table and uh, I said, Mary Ellen, um, has anything strange happened in this park? Because she was born and raised in that area. And she said, oh, not that I know of. You know, not, not, and she said, oh, I think there was a young girl kidnapped, or, but not that I know of. And I said, well, it's just so, uh, weird. I have to say this. And uh, I mentioned it because the dream was so intense, I couldn't shake it. And I said, uh, Mary Ellen, uh, sweet little old lady. Today she's 90, sharp as a tack. Please. But uh, uh, I said, Mary Ellen, I had a terrible nightmare last night. And uh, in my nightmare, a woman came into my cabin. And not only that, she came into my bedroom and she stood at the foot of my bed. She had long black hair. And Mary Ellen is kind of shaking her head, not, not knowing what this is. Zach was sitting at the same table and he looked up at me and said, did she have a kind of little part of her hair tied together? <laughs> He's a five-year-old boy. I hadn't mentioned this dream to anyone. You know, a father does not mention his nightmares to his kids. Uh, Zach said, did she have, and she indeed did. In my dream, the woman had, it's a, a stylistic thing, a tiny braid going down the side of her long black hair all the way to her breast. Uh, and I looked at Zach when he said that, and he had this look of terror on his face. He was terrified. He was a little kid. Uh, and I said, yeah, she did. She had a braid going down the side of the head, her head. How did you know this? And he said, because I saw her. And, and I was thunderstruck. I, Zach, uh, did you see her in the cabin? Did you see her... Uh, in the hallway, did you see her? And he said, I saw her with my mind. 
And it really uh, spooked me because that's exactly what had happened to me. I had seen her with, with a dream state in my mind, too. And I now just forgot another piece of detail I should have mentioned. Uh, one of the reasons Zach was afraid to come out into the living room every night was he heard scratching sounds in the walls. I know. See? Uh, I, and, and, and why I dismissed that was I knew that uh, birds can get trapped in walls, you know, rats, mice, anything. And that sound is exaggerated in the house. Uh, and I thought, you know, everything I dismissed. But that was the same scratching sound, of course, that I heard in my dream as she approached me into my room. And after that, I'm somewhat shaken, but we continue on and we finish the breakfast and we go back to the cabin and pack up to leave. Uh, as we're leaving, Zach has to go to the bathroom and he runs back in, runs back out, and he's scared again. He'd been in the cabin by himself. You know, this is a little kid taking a last-minute trip to the bathroom. Uh, and Mary was driving, and I noticed this clearly. And as we got out of town, I said, you know, i got to talk about something. I had a really bad dream last night. And uh, almost as one, all the kids said, yeah, me too. I did too. Uh, uh and I said, wait a minute, really? And I didn't tell them about my dream. And Emily was the first to say her dream, which was she was in the cabin, in her dream. And the phone rang in the main room. And she went out to the main room and picked up the phone. And Emily said, there was a woman on the phone who told me, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. And Emily said it was a, such a terrible nightmare that, that she woke up right at that moment. Emily at that time must have been, I'm going to get these ages screwed up, been 12. Um, and then Molly spoke up. And at this point, I'm realizing that there's something going on here. And I say, you know, guys, we've got to pay attention to what we say. Uh, and Molly said, Dad, I had a dream that I was in your bedroom in the cabin. Uh... And Molly said, I was in a chair at the foot of your bed, and I was tied to the chair. And I was wrestling against the ropes, but I couldn't get out, and I was rocking back and forth. And Molly is, uh, I don't know, 17, 18 at this time. And Molly says, I'm rocking back and forth, and I hear some scratching sounds coming from the hall. <laughs> And I haven't told them my dream yet. You know, I told them I had a bad dream. Uh, and uh, Molly said, a woman came into the room with long black hair. And I asked, what, it, what was she wearing? And Molly didn't know and didn't remember. But I said, was this woman coming to help you? Was she going to untie you? And Molly, who was a precocious child anyway, at 17 or 18, uh, started crying as we were driving in the van and instantly burst into tears and said, no, Dad, she wasn't nice. She was terrible. And that was Molly's nightmare. And Molly uh, woke up. Mary had had a nightmare that she was underneath the house, or the cabin, rather, and crawling around in the crawl space under all these sticks and dark black uh, twigs and other shapes. Later I took them to be bones. Uh, but that was Mary's nightmare. And uh, the fact that Mary had this dream is significant because though we all dream, Mary very rarely remembers her dream. 